All right, here we go. Kind of a little rattle and start up. Eh, uh. Hi everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today we have an interesting Toyota Camry, uh, 2011, about 180,000 miles. Customer says every time he pulls up to a stop sign, it just stalls out. Check engine lights on. He's taking it to one shop and he said that they replaced the camshaft sensor and the crankshaft sensor. <laughs> I don't know why, but he said it didn't make a difference and they didn't charge him any money. So, doing a quick visual inspection, I guess that looks like a brand new, I don't know if it's OEM or not, but that's the intake side, this is the exhaust side. Let's start up, see what it does, and see what codes it's setting. Alright, here we go. Kind of a little rattle on startup. Eh, uh, that's customer complaint confirmed. So it starts up and dies. Okay, read fault code. Go to our engine computer. Let's see, did it set anything? No. Well, I just cleared them out. Let's uh, let's run it for a little bit here. Oh, nope, didn't want to start there. Okay, I'm gonna rev it up. Seems to rev up pretty decent. It sounds kind of rattly and chattery under the hood and then it just dies out. Very interesting. Still no DTCs. Hmm. Okay, so in the health report we see in the engine control module we had these five codes stored, now there's just only two codes, P0015, P0017, camshaft position B, timing over retarded, and then crankshaft, camshaft position correlation, bank one, sensor B. That's the exhaust camshaft. Okay, then I clear the codes, ran the car again, and the only code that it set was P0015, camshaft position B, timing over retarded. You can hear there's this rattle under the hood like a phaser. That's not, you know, the, the oil control is not working very well, but it revs up fine. So I'm hoping the timing chain didn't jump, but there's something wrong with the phaser or the oil control solenoid. Now the owner said that this problem happened a couple weeks ago and he freaked out and went to get the oil changed. So if it was low on oil and something, you know, happened with that oil control solenoid oil is now clean and fresh but the problem is still here so where would you go from here I would try I would actually remove the oil control solenoid now I think the intake and exhaust are the same like you can swap them around let's swap them around see what the car does if the problem moves the problem is with the oil control solenoid we can even bench test them see if the plunger moves in and out freely or if there's some piece of junk stuck in there. I'm hoping this is going to be an easy no parts required repair. Alright so this is the exhaust oil control solenoid for the VVT system. Let's pop it out. I want to take it to the bench, put power and ground to it, see if it moves freely. Alright, so we have two solenoids on the bench, exhaust and intake. They look identical, so let's put power and ground to the intake, that's no good. Nice click, chick 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 chick, and 1.3 amps at 12 and a half volts. Alright, let's move to the exhaust oil control solenoid. Yep, 
it moves the same amount. Same type of click. So I don't think the problem is going to be here, but let's uh, swap these around, see if anything changes. Alrighty, solenoids are installed. This used to be on the intake. That used to be on the exhaust. So let's see if anything changes. As I suspected, no change. All right, the OEM service instructions for this code say first inspect the oil control valve we did we even swapped it no change next check for loose timing chain and jump teeth I don't think this is the case because the engine revs up fine the customer said that power is about the same um, next step inspect oil control valve filter okay this is very interesting so right here, this will take some time to get this out, but we need to check this next. If that's not the problem, then <laughs> replace exhaust timing, you know, exhaust gear assembly, just, just like I thought. So I'll have the customer leave the car here. We'll try to get this filter. If that's not the problem, We'll check for a, a phaser that's not locking in, in the home position. So this would require some teardown to find the root cause. So on all data, I did a search for TSBs for the P0015 and 17 trouble codes. Check this out. Engine, rattling noises, mill on DTCs, P0015, 0017. Okay, let's see what that's all about. Some 2010-2011 model year Camrys and RAV4 is equipped with the 2ARFE engine may exhibit one of the more of the following conditions. Yes, the check engine light's on. We have both 15 and 17 codes. And 2011 Camrys produced before the production change effective VIN is shown. So we have 4T1BF3EK. 1BU, ah, see, 146689, as before, 182097. Interesting. So we definitely fall into this category. And repairs covered under the Toyota Part Train warranties, only 60 months or 60,000 miles. So it's not under warranty anymore. Previous part number, current part number, gear assembly, camshaft, timing, exhaust. That is what fails. Parts information, tools and equipment. R&R, &R, exhaust, timing, um, gear assembly. So, apparently... These things are defective, the phaser fails, blows up, and then uh, there's also combo A, remove oil pan to replace additional components as needed and remove separated camshaft timing exhaust gear pieces. So this thing grenades, not a good scenario. And basically you got to replace that phaser. 4.2 hours. Combo B, remove timing cover to replace additional components as needed. Remove separated camshaft timing gear pieces. So we'll look up parts and labor. Um, that's it. I thought Toyota's didn't break, but at least they have a TSB to help out the techs when you come across a problem that's not straightforward. Um, yeah, we'll order some parts. Well, I'll give the customer a quote. Hopefully he'll approve it. 
we'll get the parts and we'll get this thing fixed up. So we'll uh, do that in part two. So I'm looking up some parts. Here's the updated camshaft sprocket. MSRP is $455. Man, Toyota, this should be a lot cheaper, especially if it's failure prone. That's a little disappointing. So I'm going to quote the customer. And we're just doing the phaser. I'm going to leave everything else alone because removing the timing covers you know, doubles the labor time. He just wants his car to run. Timing chain might be a little stretched. That's okay. So, yeah. Too bad the parts are really expensive.